Welcome to Pelham School District Today, the February version. Today's topic is wellness, and today we have Thomas Adamakis, principal of the Pelham Elementary School, and he will introduce his guests. Thank you, Dr. Cox. Uh, this morning, wellness has, always, has been important to Pelham Elementary as well as the Pelham School District for a number of years. And two of our uh, staff members that are very, uh, they're important cogs in this wheel that makes it turn and, and helps get that information out to the community and to the staff. We are here with Mr. Bolduck, who is our physical education teacher, and Ms. Dorenzo, who is our health teacher. And they are here to share a lot of the things that the Wellness Committee, both in the building and the district, do, do, do handle. Excellent. Well, what is the starting point for a district wellness committee? Uh, around 2006, uh, it was about my second year or so, the state had mandated that all districts have a wellness committee. So they pulled a whole bunch of uh, staff together uh, from the districts. We were at that time part of the Wyndham School District as well. So it was a team effort. There was administration from Pelham on the board, myself, and uh, the nutrition services director was on it as well, along with some of the other PE teachers from the other districts. Um, and uh, we were just looking at um, developing a policy uh, at that time and making sure that we were up to date with all the regulations that they were asking us to do. Very good. So how <laughs> has the District Wellness Committee evolved since then? Uh, obviously, we have separated into our own wellness committee. I'm the chair of the District Wellness Committee currently. And um, we now not only look at the policy, but we get a chance to uh, look a little bit closer at it and try to stay ahead of the curve with the continuing regulations that continue to change uh, in the district. Um, so now it's, we have administration from all three schools uh, involved in the, in, in the committee. Um, so there's a few more people involved now looking at it. Excellent, excellent. And so who serves on this committee and what are their responsibilities? The responsibilities, we look at the policies and we evaluate the practices regarding nutrition education, physical activity, guidelines, um, things that are done in the classroom as well, and we try to set those guidelines for them as, as well. So every couple of years we look at the policy and we reevaluate um, and do some more assessments to make sure that we are, we are up to date and try to foresee any changes that are going to be coming for the regulations. There's other things that we do as well, trying to bring the district together and help send out better messages. We collaborate with other groups uh, that are involved in wellness, uh, whether it's um, coalitions or, or other groups in the district that help promote our, our message. We try to make sure it's a unified front in sending those messages as well. Currently, like I said, there are uh, administration from one administrator from each building, uh, myself, there is uh, the health teacher from both schools as well. Uh, we have nutrition service department director, uh, Kelly Rambo is on it. We have some SAU members and school, school board members. We are currently continuing to look for community representatives as well as we want to send the messages out to the community. We would like their feedback as well. So um, they can certainly contact me if they would like to get involved. Uh, we only meet once or twice a year. Um, as um, we have other committees that do other work as well. So that's just kind of an overseeing uh, larger committee. That's a pretty comprehensive organization. It's definitely grown. Mm -hmm. That's excellent. So uh, each school in the district has its own individual building committee, and what are they responsible for? So that's really um, a great question. We uh, broke it up that we have the overseeing of the district uh, committee that meets once or twice a year and then at the forefront of each building um, they have a committee that probably meets monthly and what we do is we try to be the liaison between what the district policy is overseeing and doing it at the building level. So it's um, a great little asset in the building so that they have um, those people there that they can talk to each day and make sure that we're kind of bringing that policy to each building that it should be. Very good. That, that helps to make things thorough for yes. each building, and each building has its own needs. You know, you've got little kids, middle school kids, and high school kids. Yes. Absolutely, and it's different at each level, <laughs> which is great. Um, like at, you know, the elementary level, we're the first thing that they see, um, and we're able to kind of provoke that like lifelong um, healthy lifestyle from mm -hmm. the get-go, which is great. So Excellent, excellent. So you're, you were just beginning to talk about my next question, which is sure. how do these policies and committees 
impact the students? Definitely. So it's a guiding practice in the classroom, um, especially like a big topic is nutrition, um, making sure that, you know, we're never saying like you can't have this or can't have that, but it's definitely regulating to make sure that they realize that there's a balance um, and that's what nutrition is all about. It's not cutting out one thing and saying no to another, um, but knowing that if we're having a treat, we should be trying to balance it as well. Um, but also bringing together the physical aspect of it that, you know, not only what we're fueling our bodies with, but how we're keeping it healthy. Um, so that's a great thing that the students are able to kind of make that connection, mm -hmm. to know that the word, you know, wellness is to be well, and that's what we want to be for our entire lives. That is a definitely a lifelong goal. Mm -hmm. So this impacts the students, but does it also impact the staff? Definitely. Well, that's our, our biggest goal, obviously, <laughs> is to have positive incentives for the staff as well. Um, we've done some great things at um, the elementary school. Uh, we actually had an Iron Chef competition last year um, with secret ingredients that we added in. We've done walking clubs in the past. Um, we've tried to increase the opportunity to learn like self-care ways. Mm -hmm. um, I'm actually leading a seven-week meditation series at the elementary school for staff right now um, that they come once a week. Um, and then we're trying to do other challenges like water challenges, um, increase physical activity, and just promote wellnesses in all the areas that they can. Um, we did one last year where we did some drums live for a little bit, so it's kind of allowing us to act like kids in again, um, but be active as well. Yeah, I'd so. like to see, I'm sorry to interrupt, yeah. I'd, I'd like to see even with the drums alive was well attended, and it also doesn't just focus on uh, physical education and health. Mrs. Weigler, our music teacher, was instrumental in helping Mr. Bolduck Absolutely. lead no that as well. Intended. So no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So but and it was uh we'd like to and I know our staff has asked that that continue, so I know it's a lot of time. Great. But it was truly appreciated. It sounds like a lot of fun. It was it was. Yeah. And they some, even got so me how out do there. we make wellness fun for everybody? I think it's finding what um, people enjoy doing. Um, you know, some people aren't gonna go run a marathon every day. Um, but instead, you know, knowing what it is that makes them whole and healthy and feel good to want to wake up and like bounce out of bed in the morning whether that is taking a few minutes to meditate or run on the treadmill or make sure that they get that extra servings of fruits and vegetable and drink that extra cup of water mm -hmm. um, it's learning all of those things to keep well and balanced every single day and i think a big part of it is exploring options too a lot Absolutely. of things that people haven't tried before or don't even know that's out there like drums alive those new mm -hmm. programs that continue to come out there uh, it's not just physical activity, it's, it's emotional wellness, it's mental wellness, it's financial wellness as well. So continuing to get out different messages out there, um, it goes along with physical education. We try to give the kids as well as staff as many experiences as they, as they can so they find other options. When their primary options that they like to do are no longer viable, they can choose something else to remain well and, and have other things. So it's putting more tools in the toolbox to, to grab at the times of need. Yeah, definitely, particularly during this flu season. Yes. Oh, yes. absolutely. Yes. yes. So what is the future of wellness here in Pelham? The future, well, we, we don't know what the future is going to be, but we do know things, things are continuing to change uh, with uh, new diseases and new advances in, in medicine. Uh, we, we're finding out that we can prevent a lot more diseases with, with simple lifetime changes, although those changes can be hard at times when we get, we're so rooted in our, routines it makes it easier it, it makes sense um, to change a routine to be preventative and proactive is something that uh, is extremely important to us that Definitely. we feel that message needs to be spread um, we struggle with it at times ourselves um, so we're not trying to be you know holier than now it's we struggle just as much so the more we can get as a big group together uh, the better um, so we're trying to foresee what's coming down uh, the pipeline and, and stay ahead of uh, the game instead of being reactive we want to be more proactive in in all of our committees yeah. um, so as regulations are are made uh, we're already there and we can look ahead and continue um, to what's going what's going to come on the changes like i said are, are challenging uh, and a lot of people try to be hesitant on those changes but if they can make the smaller changes even if it's not all the way there yet we're going to hopefully hopefully help them make those smaller changes where it becomes an easier part of their routine when it's trying not to play catch up in the world of wellness it's literally changing every day and that's something that as like health teachers we're taught too is that you know what we taught last year is not what we're going to teach this year um, so it's definitely being open-minded that's a big thing 
um, knowing that we can try different things. It's not going to be the end of the world if you try something new. Um, and knowing that it can be the possible thing that we actually need for our building. Um, I think one of the great examples is we tried to be ahead of the curve with this for our students, uh, is we're bringing actually a weekly meditation to our school in the announcements. And we have seen um, a great increase that students are being more body aware mm -hmm. and self-caring aware and saying that I need to take a moment for myself you know, so that I don't overreact and that they're able to actually kind of have self-regulation. And so for even a six-year-old to start noticing that is a huge thing that can impact not only a child, but an adult as well. Absolutely. We need a little more of that self-regulation <laughs> yes. in uh, the public arena. Definitely. Is there anything else that anyone would like to add to the conversation today um, before we conclude? I think just to, that we're excited tonight. February 15th is Family Wellness Night at Pelham Elementary. Okay. Um, we're really excited. 6.30 to 8. There's going to be things from Drums Alive, mm -hmm. meditation, boot go camp, noodle. go noodle. One of my favorites. Um, <laughs> jump rope and Hoops for Hearts going to be active there. Um, some healthy snack tasting um, just to show parents and kids that there's not just one way to be well, um, but that there's a whole different world out there with that. Is there? Is this an annual event? We're this hoping to make it. This is our second yeah. annual. This is yeah. our second go around. And we have about 150 people. Last year we had about 100. So it continues to grow, and we hope it gets uh, bigger and more more sessions. Excellent. That's wonderful news. Excellent job. Everybody's doing a wonderful job in helping our students and our staff be healthy and well. And that concludes our conversation for today. Have a great afternoon.